Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And to all of my returning OGs, what's up, y'all? So welcome to February 2020, yeah? A very, very happy birthday to all my Aquarians out there. And I also want to wish a happy birthday to the February Pisceans. We will be moving into your season next, yes? So um, with that said, I do want to mention, first of all, I want to say that this is the intro and you will find a, um, a timestamp pinned in the comments section that will get you straight to the reading. So if you're watching multiple readings and you don't want to listen to the intro over and over again, you can use that timestamp. I do recommend, however, that everybody listen to the intro at least once because there is some information that you may really need or may be privy to, may want to be privy to, that you would miss had you not listened to the intro. Yeah. So with this being Aquarius season, I do want to mention that the reading for Aquarius could very well be a collective energy, a collective reading. However, it is intended to be for those who are looking for guidance, guidance for the sign of Aquarius because we are in that season. I do feel like this could be a reading for you generally. So maybe you might want to watch that reading just to see how it applies to you and what it could mean for your life moving through Aquarius season, just like I did with Capricorn last month. Um, even though I did mention that maybe I wanted to do a separate reading so that your readings don't get hijacked with collective energy. Hi <laughs> um, it didn't necessarily happen that way this month. I'll see. Um, but if you guys if you guys find that you know you might want an actual reading please let me know for the month of, or for the season that we're moving in i would love to know i'd love to hear that from you yeah um okay so these these readings are general and they are timeless so because they're general readings um you know just take what resonates everything is not going to resonate for everyone and this may not even be the reason for you if if you're hearing listening to this and it's just not fitting it's not making sense then please don't try and fit anything into your life that doesn't belong there naturally okay and also keep in mind that this is a general reading i'm channeling for thousands of people so um you know not everything is going to necessarily resonate with you all the time okay so just keep that in mind also these readings are timeless so just because it is dated for the month of february and i'm channeling energies for the messages for the month of february for you it doesn't mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you during the month of february this could be messages that come forward to you that spirit wants you to know at this time but it's not something that doesn't actually manifest or happen for some time down the road okay so just keep that in mind i am available for private readings all the information is found in the description box below this video um, you can also find me on uh, social media. I'm on Facebook at Divine Conversations 2711. I'm also on Instagram at Divine underscore Conversations. I do welcome you to reach out to me there. However, if you are looking to book a personal reading, I do not recommend that you use Facebook. Um, I don't even really recommend that you use Instagram. However, Instagram is a more viable option. I am able to get to the messages more quickly, but my dm situation is just full of all kinds of messages so there's still a possibility that i might miss your inquiry and with that said even if you were to say to reach out on instagram for a personal reading i'm still going to defer you back to email so if you would like to get a personal reading with me check the description box below my email can be found there along with all of the readings that i offer their description and their prices and then email me directly. My email address is divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. But again, that can be found in the description box. Again, I am going to, even if you were to reach out on Instagram, I am still going to defer to your email address because I would at least need your email address to send you an invoice for the reading. So you're better off just skipping a step and emailing me, emailing me directly and I'll get you set up for a personal reading. Yeah? Cool. So the Oracle deck that we're using for this month is the Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. I really, really enjoyed using this this um, this deck this month. Um, it was a deck that was provided by a viewer. Thank you so much for sending this in. I really appreciate it. For those of you that are interested in donating Oracle decks or Tarot decks that you would like to see used on the channel, I do have a PO box that the information for that can be found in the description box as well. Um, if you are going to send a tarot or oracle deck, you might just want to email me really quick and really and check in to see if I have that deck yet, um, so that you know we're not you're not kind of wasting money sending a repeat deck. Okay, um, but the one thing I want to say about this deck is that 
uh, of this Oracle deck is that the author speaks in first person kind of often. So just keep that in mind when I'm saying, when I'm reading through the, the, the definition on the, in the book and I'm speaking, I'm saying things like I, it's coming from the perspective of the author herself. Okay. It's not me speaking personally. It's the author and her narrative. It's sometimes it's in the first person, but it's great. I mean, it still worked really well. The messages were beautiful for that. So I'm excited to, for you to guys, for you guys to see them. And for those of you that are new to the channel and are wondering, I'm not the type of reader that's looking into the situation to be nosy. My intention with these readings here is to bring forward the best messages for you that you need to hear at this time so that you can make a better decision for your life moving forward so that you can have a greater opportunity to be more discerning for your life and for the where you want to go and potentially what could be coming on down the pipeline for you. If at any moment you find that the, something is resonating with you and you don't quite like the way that sounds, you don't want to continue manifesting with that or manifesting that, you have the opportunity to change that manifestation by changing your thought process, then changing your beliefs and changing your alignment to the situation, okay? So just keep in mind, for those of you that are here trying to snoop, trying to get into people's minds, thinking that I'm trying to get into somebody's head, I'm not your guy, all right? There are plenty of people that are out here that may be doing that, but I'm not here for that. Also understand that I do not base my channelings on love specifically. If love comes out, then love comes out. I am not resistant to that. However, if you're looking for specific love readings, then this is probably not the, the channel for you. I do have moments where I will do uh, you know, a love live session here or there, but ultimately the focus of my channel or the focus of Divine Conversation is to bring you greater guidance and understanding about, well, to bring you greater guidance, of, or, I'm sorry, <laughs> to bring you greater understanding about what is going on in your life, the energies that are surrounding you, and then bringing you guidance in, in terms of handling those energies and making the best decisions for yourselves. Yes? Okay, I believe that's it. So without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Mwah. Hello, Leo. Welcome to your reading for February 2020. Thank you so much for tuning in. So let's get into your pre-shuffle energies here. What I have for you is the, sorry, I'm fixing my necklace. <laughs> what I have for you is the 10 of pentacles with the king of pentacles. Okay, so you could be dealing with an earth sign, potentially a Taurus, or you could have Taurus in your chart, or you could have another earth, like an earth sign in your chart. All right, but it doesn't have to be, okay? And then also you have the Page of Wands. And what, what I'm getting with this, Leo, is, um, and now this could either be you or could, could be someone that you're connecting with, whomever, take it as it resonates. But if there's an energy here of someone re-identifying themselves, someone going through, having completed a major life lesson with this Ten of Pentacles here, and that whatever they've completed has left them or left you or them, whomever, in a place of being way more way way more well manifested than you may have been before. Um, quite mature, potentially. That's kind of an energy that I'm feeling here. Um, I, I'm also kind of slightly getting a little bit of an energy of maybe a proposal of marriage in some way. Um, because the King of Pentacles can be, can represent the, the, um, the husband while the Queen of Pentacles would represent the, 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 the wife, those types of archetypes and whatnot. Um, yeah, but the strongest just, and, and also that could be a, a symbolic of, you know, someone changing their ways and being ready to settle down, being ready to make a solid commitment to someone or something. Um, and that could have been a lesson that, you know, you have been working on learning for some time and now you finally come to that completion and you finally, you know, graduated from this lesson into this King of Pentacles energy. Uh, either way, <clears throat> there could be a message. There very well could be a message that's coming towards you, Leo, from someone else. I really do kind of feel like that would be the case here. Um, now I'm also with the 10 of pentacles here, I'm getting feelings of like wanting to start a family, to build a legacy, um, that kind of energy. So that will also would, you know, fall right in line with, you know, someone desiring to commit, settle down, propose marriage, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Leo. Yeah. All right, cool. So with that said, Let's get into the rest of the energies here and see what else we have for you for the month of February, yeah? Sorry, that was my phone. 
Okay. Let's give this one shuffle. All right, cool. Let's see what we've got. <clears throat> oh, well, the Wheel of Fortune is at the bottom of the deck. So yeah, major karmic change, major life cycles, overcoming obstacles, I'm hearing. Um, and overcoming those obstacles has really put you in a place to be well manifested as that King of Pentacles. Again, uh, keep in mind, guys, that, you know, in talking about that King of Pentacles, we're not talking gender. We're just talking about energy, okay? Um, it could also be the mascu a masculine counterpart. Um, but yeah, there really is a sense of having overcome some sort of obstacles or some sort of challenges that have really set you up to be in this well-manifested, grounded and secure King of Pentacles state, stable and honest and ready to, you know, be a partner to someone potentially, which is which has created and is continuing to create great karmic change for you here. Okay, Leo. Okay, cool. Let's get into the rest of it. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Well, no, not the collective, but for all Leos. So let me, let me, sorry guys, let me start over. Please make me a clear channel for all Leos, sun, moon, rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of February 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Leo, I'm going to give this five shuffles, and we'll see what we've got for you here. One. Two for my Leos. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of February 2020. This is three. Here we have four. And last one for my Leos. Five. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, and Jupiter for February 2020. All right, Leo. Moment of truth. Boop. Overall energy. The three of pentacles. Okay, so look. There really is an energy here of wanting to be a team player. <clears throat> this very well could be on the masculine end or the masculine side. So if you are an individual who is more on the more energetically associates yourself with masculine energy, then this this is I feel like this would be you. Now this doesn't mean that you are a physical male man, okay? It doesn't the gender is not in question here. We're talking about energy. And what I'm getting with this 3 of pentacles here is whomever identifies as more masculine in energy is the one that is really looking to be a team player really work looking to to work towards building a, a solid foundation for yourself and for others this could be just in business it could be also in romance too you never know this is a general reading okay so take it as it resonates underneath the three of pentacles oh shit well there goes the romance queen of cups okay what i'm getting here um this is an energy of wanting to be a, a physical partner or maybe even a mate to the feminine here, okay? So I really do feel like we're talking to masculine-oriented Leos in this situation, so far at least. Underneath the Queen of Cups is the Hermit. And underneath the Hermit, you've got the Page of Cups. So what's brought you to this or what's brought this individual, whether this is you, Leo, or this is someone you're connected to, um, What's brought this individual into this place of wanting to work together uh, potentially with someone, a feminine that they really truly are in love with is introspection, going on a deep soul journey and, and understanding who you are intrinsically or on a better, in a better way and making changes associated with that. Now with this page of cups energy, there could be a desire to reconcile, but also I'm really getting that someone just really just wants to express their love. Pages are messengers, so are knights, but the pages are also messengers and um, are mainly messengers. So yeah, this really could be an offer of love 
to someone that you really truly care about. And it might have been a really long journey for you to get to this place of understanding this. So it's kind of what I'm seeing with the hermit energy here. Now we do have Virgo with the hermit. We also have Cancer with the Queen of Cups, but it also could be any water sign, Pisces or Scorpio. Okay. Well, that's really nice, Leo. So let's get into the rest of it here. So we're going to get first half, second half of your reading. Um, you can look at it as the first half, second half of your month. Take it however it resonates for you. Yes. First set of surrounding energies for you, Leo, in the first half of your reading, you have ooh, the Queen of Wands. Uh, fiery, feisty individual, someone, and, but, but I'm get, the message that I'm getting from this, Leo, is that you really could be attracting an ideal mate or an ideal partner to you. Now, the Queen of Wands represents Aries energy, but it could be any other fire sign, Taurus, or Sagittarius, but also the signs don't have to matter, okay? But what I'm getting with this, Leo, is that, and now now I really feel like you we're speaking to a feminine Leo here, okay? Or someone that resonates more with the feminine side of things. I really do feel like you are in an energy right now of just attracting the ideal mate. That's what I'm hearing. Now, Leo, for the, okay, for the feminine Leos out there, you actually could have gone through a whole situation in which you dove deep into your own self and you really truly figured out how you feel for someone or you were probably finally able to be honest with yourself about how you truly feel someone feel for someone and you actually could be in this energy of wanting to work together as well i really do feel like if if you know if you have like a, a partnership or something like that that's a romance or on uh, that's on the horizon or something like that i really do feel like both of you are kind of on the same page about that Queen of Wands is coupled with the Page of Swords. Interesting. So someone could be watching this Queen of Wands, whether it's you or the other person. It doesn't matter. It feels like someone is really keeping tabs on this Queen of Wands, is watching this Queen of Wands, and maybe has been watching for some time. Because I feel like this Queen of Wands is really just kind of like on her own, doing her own thing, minding her own business, being the badass boss bitch that she is, you know? But now also, I kind of feel like this Queen of Wands is seeking something as well. Maybe an opportunity. I feel like her, eye, her eyes are peeled also. Keeping a close watchful eye on her vicinity, probably while still kind of like minding her own business in a sense. It's interesting. Okay, second set of surrounding energies for you, Leo. In the first in the first half of your reading, you have, ooh, the emperor. Oh, yes. So this would be the divine masculine energies here. I kind of want to say uh, this is what you're attracting into your life. This could be the individual that's watching whomever here, okay? It also could be the energy that you are literally pulling into your life right now, Leo, and keeping a watchful eye on those who do come in. And if they don't line up with this divine masculine energy, or maybe if you know of a certain individual that you understand to be your counterpart, if it's not that counterpart, then you're not having it, all right? The emperor is coupled with I told you, the magician. So Leo, you absolutely are manifesting this divine masculine energy into your life. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be romantic here, Leo. You could be in the process of aligning or calling in or manifesting or, or balancing your own inner masculine and feminine energies. You very well could be in the part, uh, in the part of your own spiritual awakening or own journey where you're now working, you, you've worked with your feminine energies, and now you're working on the masculine and integrating that into your system, for sure. But I'm also getting an energy of calling in your soulmate here. If those of you are familiar with, is it the, is it the Whispers of Love or is it the Romance Angels? I think it might be the Romance Angels deck in which there's that card calling in your soulmate. Yeah, it's the Romance Angels. I see it now. Excuse me. And 
that's literally what I just heard here. I'm look what I'm seeing with the with the uh, the emperor and the magician. It's like you literally calling. I heard calling in your soulmate. Now this could be a situation in which you have been doing this for some time, or you could be finally getting into the energy of doing that. You know, in the month of February, or for whenever this resonates for you. Ooh. Mm. Excuse me. Okay, so your challenge here, Leo, in the first half of your reading. Oh my god it's the empress <laughs> there we have it we have the divine masculine and the divine feminine energies right there so your challenge leo if you're on the feminine side your challenge is to maintain this sense of unconditional love this space of openness unity with all that is this nurturance this loving care and compassion and just providing this warm and healthy and loving space for someone to reside within for, to, for, for you to you know provide a loving space for you and your counterpart if you are the masculine here your challenge is I want to say stepping to or approaching the, your counterpart, the divine feminine. Some of you are really kind of wondering how exactly to do that. And it's not that you're incapable. It's just a matter of there could have been a lot of stuff that happened in the past between the two of you or potentially between you and some other individuals that you're that, you know, are kind of like divine feminines or just feminine energies in general. And so now Either you have somebody specific on your mind and you're trying to figure out how to approach this person because you do recognize you do recognize the empress energy within her, just like you would rep rep recognize the emperor energy within yourself. Um, and because of past situations, past circumstances, you're really trying to, oh gosh, I just heard pussyfooting. So maybe you're, maybe you're a little, you're, you're, um, you know, beating around the bush a little bit, but it's all in service of just wanting to get it right. Okay. And for others of you that don't have a specific person in mind, yet you have the type of energy that you know you want to align with in mind, then it's really kind of the same thing, you know, focusing on how to get it right this time. The Empress is coupled with the Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of what this message is right now, at least in the challenge, is for the masculine individual here. But no, I, you know what? I, I kind of take that back. I mean, because also for the feminine, it's it's kind of the same thing. It's like your challenge is to either approach the feminine or go after what it is that you want, become balanced enough to, to approach the feminine. Or for the feminine, for you, your challenge is to maintain your balance. So you're definitely mirroring each other there for sure. I, I, I take that back. I do feel like this is actually quite a balanced challenge message for the, both the masculine and the feminine here. Okay. Wow. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Leo, in the first half of your reading, you have, there is that King of Pentacles again. And the message that I'm getting with this is for whomever this is, I guess, especially for the masculine, you are in fact ready for this. So if any of you were wondering if like, okay, so with this like pussyfooting around the situation or, or beating around the bush here with the challenge here of maybe kind of like procrastinating, procrastinating a little bit and overthinking something potentially, here's your reassurance, dude, you're ready. And I'm hearing you've been ready for this. So stop fucking around. <laughs> All right. The King of Pentacles is coupled with the Eight of Wands. You see, I told you, you are ready. Clear and open space to make your moves, shoot your shot. Um, communication also. Communication could really be coming through. Communication about wanting to make a proposal. Communication about, you know, taking a relationship to the next level. Communication about um, committing to the relationship. Whoa. Whoa, Leo. This is really cool. All right. So let's get into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you, Leo. We have... <laughs> The Six of Cups. Good God, I could just vomit. This is just so sticky sweet. <laughs> but you know, it's a good thing. It really is a good thing. So there's a, there is a connection, a divine connection, a union, a partnership, 
a past a past lover i'm hearing a past friend that could 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 now you know now that you two have matured in such a way or you've gone your separate ways only to end up re meeting back you know crossing paths again now that old friendship could turn into something more past life connections also yes okay Definitely. Whomever this person is, even if you haven't met them in this lifetime yet, you would you most definitely would have a past life energy between the two of you. Okay. And so for those of you that do, that haven't quite met this person yet, or don't quite know this person, or maybe even don't even, maybe you have met them, but you don't really remember, you don't remember them well enough, or you really barely know anything about them. Um, it's like, you, it, I do kind of feel like all of a sudden you're just going to feel this instant connection with someone like straight up out of nowhere. It might blindside you is what I just heard. May totally take you off guard. The whole situation, whether you know this person, whether you don't know this person, or you do know this person, the whole situation may take you off guard. Because this is a really, especially with the Eight of Wands and the Chariot here, this is really fast moving energy. Six of Cups is coupled with. Yep. There it is. The Tower. It really could take you off guard. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> this really could blindside you. This also could be a sudden realization for someone about who their true soulmate is. So again, going back to the situation in which, you know, maybe you have already met this person, but maybe you never really saw them in that way. You maybe, maybe never really felt anything for them. Or your encounter was just so brief and fleeting that it's like maybe you don't even remember meeting this person at first. But there is some sort of like sudden coming together of twin flames, soulmates, counterparts, something. Holy moly. Okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Leo, in the second half of your reading, you have the hanged man. Okay. So there's a shift in perspective, a change in perspective, and it could be this change in perspective um some someone here may have really been held up may there may have been an energy of refusing to change your position or change your point of view but something happened suddenly that caused you to see something differently here okay the hanged man is coupled with the six of swords there you go leaving the past behind leaving the past hurt past pain past heartbreak behind and if in in terms of some and now leo is a fixed energy okay so if we're talking if we're talking to like a masculine a very masculine leo whether you're a man or a woman then actually this really could be you it kind of feels like this is coming from the masculine side um but i mean again take it as it resonates it could it be it re very well could be both of you okay um Ouch. But yeah, there's something here. There's a sudden realization, a sudden understanding that's coming into play that is allowing this shift to happen. And it could be that, you know, you may, may really not have been all that happy or all that satisfied in whatever circumstances you were in before. But now that you've changed your position or you've changed your point of view or you've made this shift, it's like, Okay, now I get it. So now I want to move towards what I what is going to make me happy. What is my pot of gold, I guess you could say. What where my true happiness lies. Wow. Okay, your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Leo, you have the Ace of Wands. So, taking action on what you're inspired to move towards. Plain and simple and straightforward. Okay, the Ace of Wands is coupled with. Ah, the Eight of Swords. But you feel trapped here. So for those of you that really want to make a move, send a message, shoot your shot, take a leap of faith in some way, but you're feeling like you're trapped, that is an illusion. You have to be the one to let yourself out of whatever mental prison you find yourself in that is holding you back from making the offer, making the proposal, sending that message, you know, asking that person on a date or whatever. It's your own fears, your own anxieties, your own beliefs, your own mind that is keeping you trapped and nothing else. Okay. Okay. 
Closing message or potential outcome for you, Leo, in the second half of your reading here. You've got the Seven of Pentacles. Excellent. So coming to fruition, I really do feel like what this is saying here is that you, you're about to harvest you're about to have a great harvest because you've been really doing the work. If you are definitely in an energy of aligning with a divine counterpart and you would know that because you would feel it coming. But if you are in that energy, you've been doing your work. There is no way that you can align with a divine counterpart, a twin flame, a divine soulmate, a div like any sort of like divine universal matchmaking in terms of love and romance you there is no way you can align without without doing your own internal work first so what i'm getting with this seven of pentacles here is you are about to receive some really great payout for all of the work that you've been doing so diligently i'm hearing seven of pentacles is coupled with oh the queen of swords and it's funny because this Queen of Swords energy feels like the universe. Like the Queen of Swords represents justice here. Um, it, uh, well, the Queen of Swords symbolizes uh, what? Symbolizes what? Lib Libra energy, which is Libra is represented by the Justice card. It's interesting that it's coming out as the Queen of Swords. Because I do feel like it's universal energy. And technically, I guess the best depiction of that would be the Justice card. But I guess what because what I'm feeling here, what I'm picking up on here, is like this isn't this isn't even an energy where it's just like, oh, good job, you know, you did such a great work, you did such great work, blah blah blah. Here you go, let me give you the, your really good reward. No, it's literally cut and dry. Like, no accolades, no extra stuff, no, like, extra emotion, no fanfare, Leo. This is straight-up facts. You did the work, you get the payoff. End of story, end of discussion, let's move on. <laughs> so I guess that's why it's coming through as the Queen of Swords. But I guess the universe wants to get it very, get the point across very clear that this literally is a cut-and-dry issue, okay? So... I guess this is for those of you that think that you can like skirt the issue or can like beat around the bush like we were talking about before or like cut corners or you know what whatever and like and and get in without really doing the full work. <clears throat> Sorry buddy. Not going to happen. I either you do the work and you do it in full or you don't get the payoff. No if ands or buts, there's no negotiation, there's no need for extra discussion. Those are the rules. You can either take it or you can leave it. So for those of you that have really been doing the work, and it's the, and, and can, like so for those of you, congratulations. But please understand that this doesn't. There is no real like time constraints or anything like that. It's not like you're timed. It's just a matter of do the damn work. That's all. All right, Leo. No pat on the back is what I just heard, too. Like, like, look, Leo, we're not going to stroke your ego for you just because you did what was required of you. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. I get it. I mean, I'm a Leo moon in Western astrology, or I'm a Leo rising in, in Eastern astrology, so okay, I get it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Here we go. Let's get your oracle guidance, Leo. One last shuffle for my Leos, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of February 2020. Let's see. What do we got for you, Leo? Oracle message for my Leos. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. For my Leos. There it is. Wow. Okay. Card number 31. Faith. And this is the Worm Moon. All right.
faith. Fertility and abundance now return. Things will get better. Growth has started. Hold on to your dreams in adversity. The quote here says, I know all will be well. It is in the darkest times that we find it hard to see the light. It is hard to see when things seem hopeless, how we can ever feel hope again. When things seem to fail, it is really difficult to draw up our resilience and stand up again. We learn by observing the seasons that the light does return. The barrenness of winter turns infinitely and surely into spring. The ice melts, the days grow longer and the nights grow shorter. Warmth and fertility slowly return to the land. It is hard to have faith in ourselves and the universe. I actually, the, I actually think faith is the real F word. Faith requires us to let go of our anxieties and have trust, perhaps in something we can't actually see yet. Having a more complete faith in yourself and a higher power to lead you to your greatest good is a solid intention. While having, actually, you know what? I want to read that one more time. Having a more complete faith in yourself and a higher power to lead you to your greatest good is a solid intention. I'm going to read it again. <laughs> having a more complete faith in yourself and a higher power to lead you to your greatest good is a solid intention. While having a rigid, blind faith does not serve us, it is important to hold on to our dreams and intentions and to focus on the outcome. To do this without taking note of what is happening around us can be folly. Our ancestors would observe nature carefully, looking for the signs of, a, of new life and fertility, altering their hunting and planting to best take advantage. Yet they knew that the ice would melt and the soil, damp and ready, teeming with worms, would receive their seeds. Your companion stone or metal is lapis lazuli. And that's actually the stone I'm using to protect my deck here while it's not in use. See? See, it's a pretty, it's a pretty lapis lazuli heart. Aw, so pretty. Isn't it so pretty? Anyway, if you, if you feel inclined to uh, work with lapis lazuli in terms of, you know, whatever the situation is, I highly recommend you do so. But with that said, Leo, I hope you have a fantastic month, and I hope this was helpful for you. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yeah? Take care. Bye.